So let's see how much we do. My power is maximum. There we go, thirty-seven eight. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that is that is a lot of damage. Hey guys, it's Aremia. And I wanted to make this uh, Crusadia guide kind of tips and tricks video because um, I think it's a super fun deck. I don't claim to be the best Yu-Gi-Oh player out there, uh, but I have played this deck quite a bit. So uh, this is going to be a longer video. I included timestamps down below. So feel free to jump around. If you don't want to hear me talk about the cards, just jump over to whatever combos you want to see or even uh, countering Crusadia, which I'm also including toward the end of the video. So with that said, let's uh, jump in. So Crusadia, you probably know, is a going second deck that aims to OTK and deal tons and tons of damage. Um, I think it's actually really strong for Master Duel because we have a best of one format. So meaning we only play single games against people and then we get matched up against someone different. It's, it's not a best of three. So uh, because when people win the coin toss, nine times out of 10, they're going to choose to go first, right? So because we're a blind second deck, we basically get to do our game plan of going second, breaking our opponent's board, and trying to swing for the win. Uh, we very rarely get forced into going first, and if we do, um, it's not amazing, but we do have some options like Avermax, Baguska, things like that, um, that could still potentially win us the game. Like, it's not as likely, but we'll get to those eventually. So if you do like this kind of play style, or you dislike the the kind of play style that Yu-Gi-Oh is known for right now of going first, setting up a ton of negates, or preventing your opponent from playing the game kind of at all, um, Crusadia might be for you, especially if you like to see really big numbers. Um, I've had some videos on the channel where I show off that you can get over 30,000 damage, um, and it's really doable and super fun. So let's go ahead and jump in to the main deck Crusadia cards. All the Crusadia monsters share the first ability where they can special summon themselves to a zone a Link monster is pointing to. And then they each have a secondary special, like more unique effect. Um, Reclusia, when he's summoned to a zone a Link monster points to, can basically blow himself up and a card an opponent controls. This can help you get rid of like opponent's spell trap cards if you didn't draw into like your lightning storms or harpy's feather dusters or getting rid of a problem uh, monster negate uh, but mainly this will help you chain block uh, and the same can be said for crusadia draco which lets you pull back a crusadia monster uh, from your graveyard usually the one that you normal summoned in order to start your combo so he kind of extends your combo in that way too um, chain blocking, if you don't know, uh, when two effects happen simultaneously, you can choose how those effects will resolve. And Yu-Gi-Oh's chain is different from other games like Magic Stack, where uh, your opponent can just pick any effect on the stack and interact with it. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you generally have to react to the thing that happened last in the chain. So chain blocking, means if you really want your Crusidia Magus's search ability to go off, then you can make that one chain link one and then make your Crusidia Draco's effect chain link two, and they would not be able to Ash Blossom your uh, Magus search. So it's one of the most important things about the Crusidia combos, um, and I'll show off exactly how it works later on in the video. So uh, Crusidia Arborea, also, very strong card. Um, she can banish herself from the graveyard in order to protect one of your Crusadia monsters uh, from destruction, kind of like a Return of the Dragon Lord style effect. Uh, the most important Crusadia monster is Crusadia Maximus because this is the one that is going to double your damage. Um, he's the one that lets you swing in for the big OTKs or even crazier, like huge damage numbers that you've seen me get in some of my other uh, videos. And finally, uh, we have Crusadia Leonis, still a good card. Uh, he gives your monster piercing. Basically, you can trample over your opponent's defense to still do damage. Um, he's definitely the least played of the Crusadia monsters. I usually play one. Uh, you could definitely play two if you wanted to or go for a little more of a budget build. Um, 
he's he's still really good. I mean, 1200 attack is the second most of the Crusadia monsters with Maximus having the most at 16. Um, and that attack will get added to your Equimax's attack at the end in order to swing in for your damage. Um, so good. He's a little more situational than the rest, which is why I only play one of him. Um, as for the Crusadia spell cards, we have Crusadia Revival, the field spell, and Crusadia Power, a uh, quick play protection spell, basically. It makes your Crusadia monster unaffected by all other card effects. Um, so very strong. This can be brought back with your Crusadia Draco. Um, you don't always have to target a monster, even though that's what you will normally be doing with the card. Um, you can bring back your power in order to protect your monsters. And you can always play more than just the one copy of power uh, if you wanted. And last one is Crusadia Revival. Uh, this will definitely help you win games. There are a lot of situations where your combo will end and you will only have Equimax pointing at a Kaiju and your Maximus. And that is not enough damage to win the game. So you would need to search your Revival off of your Regalex and then that extra 500 attack will actually turn into 1000 damage because it's doubled from Maximus. And in the end, that actually turns into 8200 damage to your opponent, which is just barely enough to win the game. So Revival, really strong. Uh, it also has the ability to let your monster swing at all of your opponent's monsters. Definitely comes in handy. There are times where you can only get up to Regulex and swinging at all of your opponent's monsters can actually help you win the game that way too. Uh, but that's it for the Crusadia main deck cards. There are a couple of other Crusadia archetype cards that you could play, like a Testament basically lets you draw cards if you kill an opponent's monster with your Crusadia monster. But in general, I, I don't really like it because like, why do I need to draw cards if my opponent's already dead? Like, that's kind of what I'm going for. So moving on, we have the Crusadia extra deck monsters, mainly all of these Link monsters we have right here. So Magus, uh, the most important one, um, he is a Link 1, and having a Link 1 for your archetype is ridiculously good. It's like the primary reason that Sky Striker is a good deck at all, is that all of their Link monsters are Link 1, and they don't have to commit so many resources to the board in order to summon them. Um, so Magus, of course, is the primary searcher for the deck. You want to summon one of your Crusadia monsters, summon a monster to the zone Crusadia Magus is pointing to, and then usually search out your Maximus or a Draco or something to extend your combo, and that will help you swing in to win the game. Then we have Crusadia Regulex. He um, also is a good searcher for the deck, but he searches a spell or trap, so basically he searches Crusadia Power or Crusadia Revival, uh, depending on the situation and what you need. And we have Crusadia Equimax. Uh, Orem puts on his centaur cosplay. I, I don't know why he, he looks like a weird horse centaur thing. Um, I don't think there's a lore reason for it at all, but uh, I don't know. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, he's the primary attacker for the deck. He's the monster that is going to end the game for you. Um, so he gains attack, of course, equal to the attack of all the monsters he's pointing to. That is original attack, um, which can also be said for the other Crusadia monsters, but mainly it's Equimax. And he, he has one other ability that does come up sometimes. He can tribute a Crusadia monster in order to negate a face-up card on board. So that includes, say, a Magic Cylinder or Mirror Force or something to that effect where if you're going to swing in for the win and your opponent activates a card, you can be like, haha, I tribute the Maximus I'm pointing to in order to still win the game. So Equimax, very strong. Um, I like to play it in these kind of ratios. Um, I'm gonna try to include like a budget build of the deck at the end as well, but this is the build that I'm kind of going with right now. So Equimax, definitely important. Obviously, he's the one that gets all the flashy kills. Um, and then we have Two left over, um, we're gonna go over uh, Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, which is just such a modern Yu-Gi-Oh card. This card has so much text on it. So it's a Link 4 that requires two monsters, special summon from the extra deck, two or more, but it's it's gonna be two. Um, generally, it will end up being your Spatha and an IP Mascarena. 
because Masquerada, when she is used as material for a Link Summon, she basically gives that monster uh, immunity to destruction effects. So not only will your Avermax be untargetable and be able to honest itself or gain attack equal to the attack of the monster it's fighting, it will also be immune to destruction cards like Ragaki. So it becomes a very difficult to out boss monster. Um, there are obviously still ways to get rid of it. Uh, if you can get rid of it without targeting, like uh, Crazy Mirror Jade, or, you know, there, there's a lot of modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards that don't target anymore uh, because Power Creep is real. But anyway, um, not only is it all of these things, but also if it is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle a card on the field back into the deck, and that also does not target, speaking of which. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a good bonus consolation if they still manage to get rid of your Avermax, you can try to get rid of something and maybe live, but probably not. Um, and finally, we have Crusadia Spatha. Most of the time, Crusadia Spatha is going to be used to set up your IP Mascarena Avermax play, um, but you can also actually move an opponent's monster, so do not sleep on Crusadia Spatha, okay? There are situations where your opponent's monster will not be in a zone in front of the extra monster zone, but you can still use Spatha to move their monster in front of the extra monster zone so that your Equimax can point to it and you can still OTK, even though your opponent, like, did the right thing and didn't put their monster in that zone. Um, you know, it's actually really good. Uh, it, it's something that I don't see a lot of people do, but it's pretty cool. I, I think Spatha is actually low-key pretty good. But that'll do it for all of the Crusadia cards. So we're going to go back to the non-Crusadia cards in the main deck. And obviously the first thing to talk about is the Kaijus. So it's Crusadia Kaiju for a reason, because we can use Kaijus to tribute our opponent's most important monster put it in the zone that Equimax can point to, and then swing in for the win, right? It pairs perfectly with the Crusadia archetype and just helps us break our opponent's boards as well. Uh, Parallel Exceed, also very, very strong. The primary extender for the deck, if you wanna see numbers that are far bigger than you would ever need to win a game, uh, they usually include Parallel Exceed because it just extends you so easily. And it will also set up chain blocks, kind of like your Reclusia and Crusadia Draco can too. Um, so that's why it's so good. And the last of the generic uh, non-Crusadia monsters in the main deck is Formid Skipper. Um, I didn't used to run this card, but I I've recently really come around to it. I really like it uh, because it can search Parallel Exceed. Um, and it's basically another Crusadia monster. Like, it's a really good starter for the deck. So what you can do with Formid Skipper is normal summon it, and then make it so it's treated as a Crusadia Regulex or an Equimax, basically anything other than Magus. And then because it's treated as a Crusadia monster, you can link it up to Crusadia Magus, and then when it is used for a Link Summon, you get to search a copy of Parallel Exceed, which is really good. I just finished talking about why Parallel Exceed is such a good extender, um, and Formid Skipper is not only a basically a Crusadia monster, but it can also search the primary extender for the deck. So, really good. Um, I, I think playing it probably at two, uh, three, honestly, if you wanted to cut one of the Reclusias, you could probably play another Formid Skipper and it'd be pretty good. Um, but it might end up breaking a little bit because it's a Crusadia deck. Uh, it can't special summon itself like the rest of the Crusadia cards. Um, so, I don't know, mess around with the ratios. I, I still think he's pretty cool. As for the rest of these spells and traps, of course, we have our going second cards that we mentioned earlier. Kaiju Slumber, our uh, spell trap destructions. Um, Call by the Grave, because I hate roaches, and uh, Imperm. Finally, we have our Monster Reborns and World Legacy Successions. This is another, uh, like, extender um, in case you get blown out. Um, if, if your normal summon goes away, or um, if you don't start all the cards you need to. Uh, for example, if you only start one Crusadia monster, then having a Monster Reborn or World Legacy Succession can still get you into your OTK combo. So moving on, uh, we're going to talk about the non-Crusadia extra deck monsters, and the most important one 
is number 60, Duggaress the Timeless. No idea why they made uh, his uh, his translation Duggaress, because it's obviously supposed to be Douglas with an L, but uh, whatever. Douglas will let you OTK even without having a Kaiju in your opener. What you can do is use Dougie to double the attack of your Ecomax and make it so he gets up to 8,000 without having to point to a Kaiju and he can still swing in to win the game. Update Jammer is also another option. Um, he would give Ecomax two attacks, but I generally like to go for Douglas because I think having the option to draw two cards is just better. Um, I, I think he's more versatile and he does basically the same thing as Update Jammer. And you can use your level four Crusadia monsters to go into him. You're not limited to just using Parallel Exceed because Update Jammer requires you to have uh, Cyburst monsters as materials. So the second most important uh, non-Crusadia extract monster, I kind of mentioned this when I talked about Avermax, uh, but IP Mascarena, um, really strong, obviously. Um, you can use her to go up to stuff like Nightmare Unicorn for interruptions on your opponent's turn. Um, but mainly, she's there for uh, giving Crusadia Avermax the protection from destruction effects. Uh, Baguska is another option in case you kind of get blown out and you need to stall. Uh, maybe draw a couple cards, wait a couple turns, and then go for your OTK again. Link Spider is another good option uh, because if your opponent Nibiru's you, then you'll have the token and you could potentially summon some more monsters because he has a downward pointing uh, Link arrow. I find that usually I don't have enough resources if I've been nibiru to still OTK. If you wanted to play him, you could probably cut one of the Magus's. I like to run three, but, you know, it's up to you. Mess around with the ratios all you want. And then, of course, uh, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn. Um, I find Phoenix to be really strong. Uh, if you wanted to play Cerberus, you could as well, because it's really easy to get the extra draw off of Phoenix because of uh, having a Link 1 with a downward pointing arrow basically lets you destroy a spell card for free and get a redraw, uh, which is pretty good. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some combos. So this is a pretty standard start. I'm actually gonna treat it like we don't have uh, this Parallel Exceed in our hand, just to show you what a normal Crusadia OTK would look like. Um, so because we started with Maximus in our hand, we actually want to start our combo by normal summoning Maximus, all right? And that's so we can add it back to our hand with Draco and have it available to special summon later. So if we started with Arborea in this case, we would have to special summon our Maximus and then we wouldn't be able to special summon Maximus to the zone Equimax will eventually point to. Um, so that's why we're doing this. So we're going to special summon Arborea to the zone Magus is pointing to right there. Activate. And we are going to add Crusadia Draco to our hand. All right. Um, we're just going to go ahead and Kaiju this creature right here. All right. And have that pointing to uh, be in front of the extra monster zone right here. And then we can go up to Regulex. Of course, um, you could also activate Regulex's ability by summoning the Kaiju to the zone uh, in front of Regulex because he has these two arrows, one in front of him and one down. Um, I'm just gonna show you this way because this is pretty standard. Um, in case, say our opponent had a Barone there, it would be better for us to Kaiju the Barone and then do our combo, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we can actually chain block our Regulex. I can talk about chain blocking again uh, because we have two effects happening simultaneously. We have Regulex as chain link one and Crusadia Draco is chain blocking Regulex. So if they had an Ash Blossom, um, they wouldn't be able to use it to block our uh, Regulex's search for our field spell here. Uh, so Draco going to add back our Maximus. Cool, cool. Resolve, Draco, add back Maximus, Regulex, and we are going to search for Revival. All right. And now we are going to Link Summon up to Equimax, the heavy hitter. There he is. All right. And then we are going to Special Summoner Maximus. Like I said earlier, we needed to save the Special Summon 
for the end of the combo. So Maximus, activate, and we can double Equimax's damage. And as you see uh, right here, so 60 minus 24 is not enough to swing in for the win. However, 65 minus 24 is 41, which times two is 8,200. So uh, that is why we end up searching for revival in that case. So if you only have a Kaiju and one Maximus and no other monsters to power up Equimax, this is still uh, an OTK. Assuming they don't. <laughs> Assuming the computer player doesn't mess me up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the bread and butter uh, Crusadia OTK. Uh, so now let's go into some more complicated combos. So in this example, I can show off just why a uh, forward skipper is so cool. Uh, we're of course going to get rid of our opponent's back row. There it goes, and we might as well Kaiji right now. Alrighty, so I'm going to set that so I don't get triggers. Uh, so what we're going to do is Formid Skipper, activate, treat it as Regulex. Alright, and now it is treated as a uh, Crusadia monster. So we can use it to Link Summon up to Magus. And there we go. And now we have Formid Skipper's effect to search a copy of Parallel Exceed. Right, so we're gonna use our Crusadia monster. Summon, and we're gonna go ahead and I guess it doesn't really matter what we grab. I'm just gonna grab Draco. All right, and then we're going to Link Summon up to Regulex again. And luckily we have our World Legacy Succession because we started with Maximus, we can still double our damage at the end. So Regulex, and we get our trigger for Parallel Exceed. Special Summon, and we can Chain Block here. I usually Chain Block the Search, but if you really want to get the Parallel Exceed, uh, you can Chain Block it in the other order. Whatever you want uh, to prioritize, you can totally do that. And Regulex, um, normally we go for Crusadia Power in case our opponent had interaction or wanted to get rid of our monsters. Um, but I'm going to go for Revival just because I like to see big numbers. Alright. And what we can do here is go ahead and go up to Equimax. Here we go. Cool, cool. And we can Crusadia Draco. Do I have... Uh, yeah, I guess we can do this. We're just going to send back a Magus. Alright. And what we can do is go for Douglas. And end our combo. World Legacy Success... Uh, <laughs> World Legacy Succession. Good grief. Summon back Maximus. Double our damage. And double our attack power. So you can see if we had like a Jizukiru or something on our side of the board too, we would be doing even more damage because he would gain 33 instead of the 16. Um, oh, I messed up. So it should be actually a thousand more damage, but oh well. And swing in. There you go. That's why Formid Skipper is so cool. It's because it can search, um, search Parallel Exceed. So I finally got the right hand. Um, sometimes you will have these weird starts where you only have one Crusadia monster and a bunch of Kaijus, right? What you can do is actually use those Kaijus as pseudo Crusadia monsters, and I will show you how uh, here in a second, okay? So what we're gonna do is Kaiju Slumber, summon, I like the three-headed dragon, because I think it's cool. All right, and then we can summon Crusadia Arborea, go up to Regulex, all right? 
Regulex. Here. I know, I know you're probably thinking that we're going out of order, but this is intentional. So we can use Regulex to go down to Magus. All right. And then because our opponent controls a Kaiju now, we can summon a Kaiju to the zone Magus is pointing to in a very roundabout way. Uh, we can finally get into our combo this way, right? So we can grab Maximus. And then go back up to <laughs> to Regulex. I know this is so silly, but this actually works. This this works. Uh, this actually works out. So we can use this Kaiju, summon to Regulex, and find our revival. And it kind of ends the same way as that first combo I showed you. So we can go for. <laughs> My voice crack, good grief. We can go for Equimax here. There he is. Summon Maximus. And that is 8200 damage. So a very roundabout way to get to the same combo, uh, but you can make a lot of these hands work. Um, that's why I think Crusade is a lot better than people think it is. Um, because you see the deck, and it doesn't really have any uh, one card combos or anything, but there's so much redundancy in the deck. There's so many ways to end in the same like big OTK. So you can actually kind of get creative, even though it's a very linear combo. Oh my goodness, computer, stop interrupting me. <laughs> oh yes, continue attack. Kill the insect, kill it. Okay. <laughs> GG's computer, <laughs> you, you, you got your time in the spotlight. All right, and this combo is uh, going first, obviously. So if you are stuck going first, uh, just any two Crusadia monsters will get you into Avermax protected by IP Mascarena. So what we're gonna do here is go for Reclusia, go up to Magus. Link ones are so busted. There's only a handful of Link ones in the game. Um, so that's why, like, having a Link 1 is super strong. Uh, so of course we want to Chain Link 1 the Magus, because Ash Blossom's a lot more common than, a uh, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion? Uh, the Graveyard one, I'll throw up a, a clip of, oh my goodness, computer. <laughs> Even when I'm going first, the computer wants a piece. Alright, so Draco grabs back the Reclusia. And we can search any Crusadia monster we want. Okay, and we are going to go up to Spatha. This is the main use for Spatha. I mentioned how you can move your opponent's monster, uh, but most of the time we're just going to do it this way. Spatha lets us move our monster uh, away from the zone she's pointing to, so we can summon the other Crusadia monster that we just searched, just like that. Go up to IP Mascarena with these two. And that is two Link 2s, which is enough to go up to Avermax. So if your opponent like tries to Raigeki it or something, um, it has protection from destruction because of IP Mascarena. It cannot be targeted. And uh, whenever it fights a special summoned monster, he gains their attack during the damage step, which is pretty busted. Um, and Crusadia Power can also like protect him from effects. Uh, for a turn, so it's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, and to end things off with the uh, combo section of the video anyway, I wanted to show off just how much damage you can do with Crusadia, uh, now including Parallel Exceed and a Kaiju Slumber. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and Kaiju Slumber. We wanna summon a big monster to our side of the board and a big monster to our opponent's side of the board. Cool, cool. Summon Reclusia. Go up to Magus. There we go. And activate Parallel Exceed. And Parallel Exceed also gets to uh, chain block us as well. So it's just a very strong card. Um, I think I have two 
in this deck. I actually really like running three as well. So the the ratios are really whatever you want to make them, right? Um, two is nice with Worm and Skipper because it's easily searchable. Uh, but if you open both, then you can't really use it to special summon another one. Um, so we are going to add our damage doubler and go up to Regulex. There we go. And what we can do is Crusadia Draco. And we are, of course, going to uh, search the field spell just for maximum damage. My power is maximum. So cool. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone got that reference, but anyway. And we are going to go ahead and summon our Equimax right here. Alrighty. Of course, go for our Maximus Damage Doubler. There we go. And then go for Douglas. And just because we started with Monster Reborn, let's get as much damage as humanly possible. Here we go. Monster Reborn. Our uh, Parallel Exceed. <laughs> just for fun. Summon it right here. Don't normally get this much damage. Um, and you can see, like, if your opponent had a lower attack monster, uh, we could get even more than this <laughs> if, if we were lucky. Um, I might make a video, like a challenge video, wholly aiming to like get a ton, a ton of damage. Um, we'll see. So let's see how much we do. My power is maximum. There we go, 37-8. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that is that is a lot of damage. So if you want to know how to counter Crusadia, this section will not be very long. I'm not going to take up much of your time. Um, the easiest way to do it is to stop the normal summon. If you can get rid of their normal summon monster, chances are extraordinarily high that the Crusadia player can do literally nothing. Like literally nothing and then die on the crack back the next turn. The only way Crusadia can really play around getting their normal summon destroyed is if we also open Monster Reborn in the same hand. And you can't really play around the one of. It's just it's just something about card games. Like, if they have one of copy of it, then they got you. But keeping the normal summon off the board, preventing them from going into Magus in the first place, and starting the combo will generally stop the play in its tracks before it gets started. If you cannot stop the normal summon, you can uh, try to negate the Magus with something like an Infinite Impermanence or an Effect Failure um, will also generally stop the OTK because then they would have to also open Maximus, which is a three of, but if you stop the search, they might not have enough resources in order to gain the attack they need to swing in to OTK in that one turn. Those are the main two uh, because Crusadia is not a hyper competitive deck or anything, the ways to counter it are pretty simple. One really jank way, I guess, of countering Crusadia is to clear your own board. Um, if, if you can do that, uh, chances are also pretty high that they cannot OTK you. And then if you have like a one or two card starters to get back into the game on the following turn, uh, Crusadia does not have a lot of recovery. So if it turns into a grind game, chances are also high that Crusadia will not be able to last and will end up losing. So, I don't know. Those are my suggestions. Uh, I'm just going to go over some uh, deck builds. I wanted to show what I'm running currently and even that you can mess around with these ratios as much as you want. I mentioned that I actually really like having three parallel exceed. Um, two is perfectly fine. If you find that you're breaking too much with three, that's okay. Um, it is however however you want to build the deck, right? There's a lot of freedom in the ratios because the game plan is very simple. I, I'm not making this deck out to be some ridiculously complicated deck. The combo is very linear. The, the game plan is very simple. You want to just run over your opponent, right? 
the way you do that can be pretty involved, right? Um, if you wanna see the deck in action, um, I have a couple of Crusadia videos up on my channel already. I will probably be making more in the future because I just really like the deck. I think it's really fun. And of course, I like seeing really big, stupid numbers, right? <laughs> 30, 37,000 is probably the most I've gotten. But of course, we want to see it against a real person. Um, so stay tuned for that if you want to sub. So here are the deck builds. Again, this is what I am running currently. I will have these written out in the description below. And this is a good example of what a more budget-friendly version of the deck would be. Um, I think the deck is pretty budget friendly in general. Like, yeah, there are a bunch of ultra rares, but almost all of the ultra rares are cards like Imperm or Lightning Storm that you could play in just about any deck. So it doesn't feel as bad if you spend your ultra rare points on it because you know it's splashable and you can play it in just about all of your other decks. And in this case, the extra deck isn't even filled out all the way. Um, if you did have IP Mascarena and Avermax, go for it. It will definitely help your uh, turn one plays if you are stuck going first, but you really don't need them. As you can see, like the OTK is really simple. Um, you're going for these big swings with Equimax, and if you just fill out your deck with Kaijus, some ways to get rid of your opponent's back row, and enough Crusadia monsters to do the combo, uh, you're pretty much set. And honestly, this deck could perform very well. When I first started playing Master Duel, Crusadia was one of the first decks I built because I knew it was so budget friendly. And I was playing in Platinum uh, pretty easily back then. And I didn't have Avermax or Appaloosa or any of those like busted cards. I was just playing what I had, right? Uh, and the deck does pretty well. So before we end off, I just want to talk about some other options that you could play. Ash Blossom, as always, um, really good because it hits just just about anything in the format at any given time, especially Maxi, because Maxi is legal in Master Duel. Any other going second cards you would want to see, Alpha, Master of Beasts, Pankratops, um, Orochi is a decent card. Uh, Forbidden Chalice, if you wanted to go more budget and didn't have uh, infinite impermanences, that's a good choice too. And there is one other option in uh, Small World, if you have a far bigger brain than I do um, and understand Small World, you can actually use your Crusadia monsters and Kaijus and kind of smooth out your hand so you can still get to the OTK if you don't draw super well. But that is going to do it. If you do have other suggestions for how to play the deck, feel free. Uh, leave it in the comments below. Talk about it. I really love Crusadia. I'll probably be down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a great day and God bless.